I'm Steve Conover, and this is a Friends of Israel Digital Extra. Folks, welcome to the uh, Friends of Israel Today Digital Extra. And today I'm honored to welcome to the program Ehud Diskin, who is the author of a new book, an autobiography of his life that's been released recently, tr- uh, translated into English. Uh, Ehud, his resume is too long for us to spend um, talking about now, but let me just briefly say Ehud is an Israeli who served his country bravely, Israel, with the Israeli Defense Forces, eventually reaching the colonel of uh, the, the rank of colonel. Uh, he fought in the 1967 Six-Day War, the War of Attrition, and the Yom Kippur War in 1973. Uh, after his time in the military, Ehud went on to become an extremely successful businessman and today divides his time between Tel Aviv and Los Angeles. Ehud, thank you for being on our digital extra today for the radio program. You're welcome. Nice to be here. Uh, Ehud, your book was phenomenal. I mean, really, I felt like I was in the middle of your life growing up, from where you were born in Jerusalem, even through the wars, and how you made your way over here to the States. A well-written book, uh, Yes, It's Possible. And and, uh, can you speak briefly about you being a young boy um, growing up in Jerusalem four years before Israel was founded? Yes, uh, I, I have a good memory. I was four years old, and I remember besieged Jerusalem, the artillery on Jerusalem, the lack of food, the lack of water. People were killed, but people were brave, and it was not a long time after the Holocaust, and they believed in Israel, and they believed in the state of Israel, and what they said, they believed in Zionism. Hmm. Yeah, in your book you say this, uh, in the early 1960s, you were looking back and you wrote this, I believe that this defiant and bold move, talking about you going into the battalion uh, reconnaissance patrol uh, in the IDF, you wrote, I believe that this defiant and bold move was one of the most important in my life. I had finally found the courage to act on my patriotic feelings and express my love for my homeland. And I believe in the book you were looking at some of the burnt-out cars that were on the route up to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv from the Independence War. Yeah. I, I, uh, when, when, you, when someone is going to the Army, uh, when you can't become 18, it's a regular procedure. But then when I, I could uh, volunteer and went to be uh, a soldier, you know, for the patrol forces, I felt I felt much better. And always, you know, in what I'm writing also, I remember that I, I was uh, driving to Jerusalem and I saw uh, all the burnt trucks and I thought to myself, these people, they sacrifice them, themselves to bring food to Jerusalem, and I have also to try to do my best for the state of Israel, and it's not, me, it's not only me. I know that there are a lot of Israelis that they feel this way. Can you talk a bit about um, your experience in the 1967 Six-Day War, what you were doing, and, and really the courage it took for Israel during this time as it was being attacked simultaneously by by all of its neighbors? Yeah, uh, I was in the division of General Tal, and uh, our division, they, first of all, before the war, I don't know if everyone remembers what happened, the Egyptians, they blocked the Suez Canal, they blocked the way to the south of Israel, uh, to, to Eilat, to the city of Eilat. And they uh, began all these celebrations in the Arabic countries that this is the end of Israel, and they are going to destroy Israel and to kill everyone. And uh, we were very depressed, but we didn't have a choice. And uh, Israel attacked first by surprise, uh, they, the 
Air Force in three hours destroyed all the Air Forces of the Egyptian and of the Jordanian. And then, especially in, in uh, Sinai, the tanks, they went in. And here I must, I must uh, mention uh, Major General Ariel Sharon, that first the plans of the Prime Minister Levi Eshkol was only to push the Egyptian uh, like six miles and to, to win the war. And uh, Ariel Sharon, that he was a great general and he had the most complicated mission in this war with his division, he, he went and he carried all the, and pushed all the Israeli army to the Suez Canal. And this is how Israel got all Sinai. Sinai. That's ama- that is an amazing story. So it was through the leadership of the former prime minister, Ariel Sharon, uh, to push the uh, Egyptians back beyond the Sinai that ultimately gave the victory to Israel. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, of course, the other divisions, they fought uh, very well. And uh, it was this colonel, Shmuel Gorodish, who became a major general later. And I'm writing about him in, in, in my book. He was a very special uh, person. He was a war hero. And in the north, in the Gaza Strip, they had very bitter fights against and a lot of casualties. But they made it. And also they, they ran all the way to the Suez Canal in six days. It was a short war. Uh, can you explain to our listeners, uh, the 1973 Yom Kippur War was a complete surprise uh, for the most part for Israel. Uh, c- can you tell our listeners, was it close? Did Israel almost lose it all during the Yom Kippur War in 1973? Yeah, people, especially the politician, they believed that it's a disaster, and uh, Moshe Dayan who was the Minister of Defense, he say this is the destroy of the third temple. That how he thought he wanted to to withdraw back, but the the army, after we had a lot of losses and casualties, they believed they believed that uh, we can we can do it. And after the Egyptians, the Syrians surprised us, we fought back. The reserve came, and here I want to mention again uh, Ariel Sharon. I don't want to talk about him politically because uh, some people they think he was great, some people not. But as a, as a military leader, he was the best. He initiating crossing the Suez Canal, and I was in his division. You know, we were the first brigade to pass the Suez Canal. I was the operation officer, and after we passed the Suez Canal. It was uh, almost the end of the war because the Egyptians, that they were surprised, they began to run away, and uh, we we surrendered the third army of the Egyptian, and we could take over all all uh, Egypt. We were we were uh, 60 miles from Cairo, and and uh, Kissinger at this time, he. He stopped the war because he didn't want the, that we will we will uh, destroy all the Egyptian army because he thought about the future of the peace to make peace. Uh, you know, I've stepped several times on the on the hollowed grounds of the Valley of Tears up in uh, up in the Golan Heights, and it's just a great reminder of the sacrifice that was made during the Yom Kippur War. And how Israel, in and in again another miracle moment, um, was able to to stave off its enemies. It's amazing. Uh, Ehud, would you mind sharing? You're you're in a unique Israeli. You have your feet both in Israel and in America. Uh, could you speak at all um, from your experience about American support for Israel today? Yeah, I. I uh... America is supporting Israel, and there are people like you, which warm my heart, that they support Israel. Unfortunately, there are a lot 
you know, and I meet them here and there, that they are not supporting Israel. And I think that the main reason, because they don't know what's going. Hmm. Yeah, because I, I, especially with the wars, with the, like with the Hamas, and uh, they see the, the Arabic propaganda is very strong, and they see the casualties with, you know, also the civilian casualties, which everyone is sorry for them. But they, they, they forget, like, that uh, Israel doesn't have a, a choice. And, and, and it is a pity that they, they should learn more. And, and really, I'm very happy to be in, uh, in your program here uh, because you are explaining more what is the real situation here. Yes. Yeah, that's our heart, sir, is to, to educate people about the truth of what's happening in Israel. Folks, I want to encourage you to pick up the book, Yes, It's Possible, uh, a wonderful autobiography, uh, autobiography written by Ehud Diskin, who we have on our program today. Ehud, thank you so much. You can pick up his book at Amazon.com. Um, please read it. Please enjoy it. Ehud, thank you for your time, uh, sir. You are a treasure to us. Uh, we greatly appreciate you. You're more than welcome, and thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks.